Hello! Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to a Lord of the Rings draft here on the channel. I'm going to be going pick by pick, play by play, talking through everything so you know what to do when you draft this fine format yourself. If you would like to find more of an overview style video, my draft guide is already posted on the channel. And, uh, you can find plenty of other resources to help you, but we're going to be going through here. If you do enjoy this sort of thing, let me know in the comments below and I'll make more of them. Okay, our rare is Fall of Care Andros, a card that I do not think is very good in draft. The reason being, most decks I like to build heavily use the ring. And the second mode on the ring is a looting ability that lets you draw and discard, and you just discard your extra lands, which is very strong, but if you have Fall of Care Andros, you want to get to 8 mana, and with the ring you're looting away like your 5th and 6th lands sometimes, so I don't really love this card. I have wanted to try Shire Sharif. I don't know why it's not Sheriff. I guess Sharif is, I'm not exactly sure what Sharif is, but Shire Sharif is very good in like a token food aggro deck, but I haven't gotten to build that yet, and I kind of want to try. Strider, Ranger of the North, is more of a like gold card, obviously. It only fits into red, green, or splashing decks, so I'm going to avoid that. And then in the commons, I think this card is fine as a two drop. This card's good in blue, red. This card's fine if you need some card draw. This ramp is okay, but the commons are not spectacular. So taking a Shire Sheriff, it's a card that I like. It might not perform as well, but we'll have to see. And now the obligatory note. If you are drafting in person, you should almost certainly take Nazgul here because Nazgul is worth over $10 right now. Some of them are up as much as like $15 or $16 because there's nine different artworks. And so all the different arts are like hard to come by because it's an uncommon with a bunch of different arts. So Nazgul is worth money drafting. But... In terms of strategy, which I know you're here for, the strategy, what I like to do, and it's especially helpful if you're new to draft, is the first thing you do is, okay, I have a white card. What are the best white cards in the pack? There's Esquire of the King, Dunedain Blade, and Fog on the Barrow Downs. I think Fog on the Barrow Downs is not a great removal spell, but it's probably the best of the white cards, but it's not very good. The best card is probably either Nazgul or Claim the Precious. I lean towards Claim the Precious because I think removal is super important in this set, and I really like Claim the Precious. Nazgul is also nice. The Death Touch is just a great mechanic, but I think Claim the Precious is a bit better. And then Shortcut to Mushrooms isn't the best. It's not my favorite. I think Nth Fury is a fine red common. Rally at the Horn. I mean, green common. Rally at the Hornberg is a fine red common. But I'm going to take Claim the Precious. It is a card that I'm a big fan of. I think it's a little bit better than Nazgul. Okay. And now we're going to get to maybe try out a card that I have wanted to get some reps with. Oath of the Grey Host. It's a sort of card that in my mind is not very good. But this could be a home for it. Because I already have a Shire Sheriff which cares about me having tokens to sacrifice, and I can make use the food token for that. Um, and I have to claim the precious that makes me want to play black. I think the other cards in consideration this pack uh, are Birthday Escape, which is a really nice cantrip that helps the ring tempt you, which I really like the ring. I think it's a really powerful effect. <laughs> I really like the ring. <laughs> and Sphere is a solid green card. Mushroom Watchdogs sometimes fits in the same decks as Shire Sheriff because you want food tokens to sacrifice. You cannot pass is a bit unreliable because you have to have a legendary creature and then you have to have it like get into combat somehow. You don't always have control over what they block or attack with. We're going to try Oath of the Grey Host though and see if that goes. We're going to assume that it's a good card in this deck and like treat it as that even though I don't have huge reps with it. And in my mind, it's like if you're a defensive deck, Oath of the Grey Host seems like a huge liability. There was also an East Farthing Farmer that I could take, which does go well with the Shire Sheriff. Okay, so here there's a Mordor Muster which could fit well in this deck. Token uh, card, uh, Shire Shrift cares about tokens. There's also an East Farthing Farmer. I would rather bias towards black at this point because my better cards are in black or the cards that I saw later. I first picked this card. There was no signaling going into that pick. Whereas my black cards, I got passed to me. So here Mordor Muster and Lash the Balrog are both tempting. I kind of like Mordor Muster as a two drop that can fuel my token synergies early and then like find me what I need later. I think Lash of the Balrog is fine removal, but I'd only really ever want one copy. Similarly with Sam's Desperate Rescue, you only ever really want one. Sarm on the white is interesting, but I think it's better to just stick to a color that I already have cards in right now. And in this case, I think Mortar Muster is good enough with the Shire Sheriff that I'm happy to take it here. Okay, another Claim the Precious. This is a very, very easy pick for me. I already have a bunch of black cards. Black is the color I'm guaranteed to play, so getting a very strong black card is premium here. Easterling Vanguard might even be my second pick out of this pack. Even though I like Athelian Kingfisher, I think, as a more powerful card, potentially. I'm not even sure that's true, because 2-drop versus 3-drop. And uh, it's a black card, which goes with my other cards. So I think I would take Easterling Vanguard second, and then third pick, take the Kingfisher over, like, breakfast. Second breakfast! I always have to say it like like Pippin does in, in, in Lord of the Rings. 
But does he know about second breakfast? Soldier of the Grey House. But yeah, here I go. Claim the Precious, Easterling Vanguard, Ithilien Kingfisher. Then maybe I would take like this. I don't think this land is very good because you want your mana fixing early. And by the time you have legendary creatures in your graveyard, you already kind of have, have had that color. Okay. Twitch chat says pretty good accent, which by the way, I am streaming this live on Twitch. So if you are interested in catching me live, you can find a link to that in the description. Here, Banish from Edoras is a card that I'm actually fine playing one copy of, because I think removal is really important in this set, not only for big threats, but also for little creatures. They tend to have tapped creatures no matter what deck they are too, because their ring bearer will attack. And getting rid of a ring bearer is really important. Sam's Desperate Rescue is a card that I do kind of like. It doesn't really work well with this kind of tokeny deck that I have, because all my cards to make creatures are not like that good themselves, but I'm going to take it over Banish from Edoras because I am not sure I'm going to be playing white and I'd rather just get a card that's guaranteed to make my deck. Huh. Gandalf's Sanction is very good and there's a bunch of red cards in the pack, but I don't think I can go down that path. It just seems a little bit too unreliable. There is a Rally at the Hornburg, which can make tokens... There's not a black card in the pack. There is a Shire Terrace. I think for me, it's between the Rally at the Hornburg and the Shire Terrace. And I think I'm going to take the Shire Terrace. I don't think I'm going to miss a Rally at the Hornburg. I'm not even sure I'm playing red. But a Shire Terrace could open up splashing possibilities. And I like having that going into pack two, where I don't have to worry about picking up splashing later. I already have it in case I need it. Hmm. Now we see some blue cards. Bill, Billy, Bill Fernie's okay. Just a two drop that gets a treasure token is fine, I think. Orcish Medicine is not a card I love. Not my idea of a good time. I'm going to take Bill Fernie. Just a two drop. Legendary can matter. Okay, so this is what wield. Eastmark Cavalier. Escape from Morthank is solid. There's an Olakai Crusher. Enraged Huon. I still think my best second card is Shire Sheriff, even though I first picked it and haven't seen much to go with it. I'm still going to take the Eastmark Cavalier here. Over the Huon. I think the green card would be my next pick here. And now we're wheeling some cards. This card could go well in a token strategy. Like if I'm making multiple bodies for one card. Maybe I want that. I could also take Fog on the Barrow Downs. But now that I have two good removal spells, I don't think I need to stoop to the low ones. This is the sort of like late, like in pack two or three when you need removal and you don't have any yet. Huon, I do like the, that stuff, but I kind of want to try the Esquire. And now we got a Sam's Desperate Rescue number two. And Haunt of the Dead Marshes. So if I have a legendary creature, I can return him. But it's just a 1-1. One, one. I'd rather just get the Sam's Desperate Rescue. Just really stack up that ring stuff. Ooh, now for Wrath, now for Ruin. Maybe that could fit in my tokens deck if I get there. Late blue cards, though, I will say. Maybe I was just supposed to take the uh, Arwen's Gift. I'll check this guy. And last pick, hit Light Knots. Maybe blue is open. Ooh... Arwen Mortal Queen. This card's really hard to beat for some decks. Because Indestructible is just really, really tough. Green White. Did I see any green? Not really. I saw a couple of Ents Furies. There is Bill the Pony, which is really strong. Like, it doesn't look it, but it can hit them for a lot of damage. It's good ring bearer. This is the card that I like with Sam's Desperate Rescue because it just forms a great card draw engine. Mirkwood Bats could be good if I had more token stuff. I might take... I'm, gonna, I'm trying to play a black deck, so Arwen doesn't really fit. And I'm not even sure I'm playing white. Like, I'm probably playing white. And splashing green isn't that hard with the Shire Terrace. But you don't really want to splash Arwen, I don't think. Because by the time you can get it down, they can maybe have an answer to it, like a Barrow Down. So I'm going to take Build the Pony. I really like it. I'm going to try to wheel Mirkwood Bats. Tom Bombadil. I always imagined him talking like that when I read the book. Here there is a Protector of Gondor, which I really like. There's another Token Enabler. There's another Mirkwood Bats. There's a Took Reaper. I think here we're either going to be playing... I mean, we kind of could play blue. We could take this, like, Gandalf. Goes with, like, these Tempters. We don't really have a lot of white cards to speak of. Mm -hmm. Um, Gandalf is quite good. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna switch to blue, I think. And I really like Urukai Berserker. There's also Errand Rider of Gondor. Minus Tirith. Hmm. Uh, I could just take Errand Rider. I could also just take Urukai. I'm gonna play black, I think, because I have these two claim the precious. I'm not gonna switch to blue white. I think I'm just gonna abandon my white cards and play blue black. In which case Urukai is probably better, even though this is a really good land. Okay, now this is a pretty good ring bearer. We're seeing some green. There's more white, but I think we're just gonna go with Blue, black here. Getting a last pick hit lane knots is pretty crazy. And Kingfisher's a card I've wanted to try more. Goldberry. Man, immediately punished. I could still switch back. I don't think Goldberry's very good. Yeah, sure, we'll take Shadow Summoning. Maybe we end up going back to black, white. Lost at Legend is quite good as well. This is why you don't want to commit too much. There is a Glorious Gale, but... And we just saw three cards in a row that really make me glad that I didn't shut the door on white. Denethor is fantastic. We get an Easterling Vanguard as a nice little two-drop. I really like Shelob's Ambush. Late Sarum on the White, maybe. I'm not sure how good that card is. I haven't seen it yet. I don't think we're going to splash Gandalf, but it is in my mind that we could. Because we have one... Ooh. We wield the Protector of Gondor that we were considering taking anyway. I think two Reaper is a fine two drop. But I'd rather just get a card that makes two bodies for one card in this deck. Another now for Wrath, now for Ruin. I don't think we want the second one. Maybe we won't even want the first one. Hmm. Eight creatures, but we have a Creature Maker here, Creature Maker here. So that's three creatures more. So we have 11 creatures, really. I'm excited to see how this deck does. I don't think I've missed out on that much power level because I've kind of been weaving my way through taking the strongest card. Eagles of the North is fantastic in this build. Because it buffs all my guys, which is great. Probably means I don't need Now for Wrath, Now for Ruin, because I kind of have a similar effect. But we might try it anyway, because uh, we have a bunch of them to potentially run. Ooh, Sauron, the Necromancer. This card's great in my deck. I have good plenty of the Ring Tempts. I have ways to get it back. And uh, yeah, overall... Pretty great. I would take Lost to Legend if this wasn't in the pack. There's going to be a lot of historic permanence because they just put the ring on something or just a good legendary. But this is a nice little boost in power levels of the deck. I feel like there was one card. Oh, yeah. I took the Urukai Berserker over Errand Rider of Gondor. I'm not even sure that's that much worse. Errand Rider's good, but like so is the Urukai Berserker. I really like the Urukai Berserker. Okay. Build a Pony, I think I'm going to take to the Sam's Desperate Rescue. There's another Urukai Berserker, and there is a Troll of Khazad Doom. There's also a Landreval, which means that uh, if he attacks and another creature attacks, he gives one of the creatures flying. But if you already have like a flyer, then you can just attack with two creatures, give one of them flying, or you have your, your Ring Bearer. I'm going to take Bill the Pony. I think it's just really nice. Um, it's just, just a really strong card. Just gets a lot of card like value. I think Troll's good too, and Urukai Berserker. I've been impressed by Bill the Pony, though. Another Denethor. That's really good. Bill is just an excellent ring bearer and really good for blocking ring bearers, which is an underrated skill. Because, like, they have a 1 3 and Bill can take them down. Denethor is fantastic. I wouldn't mind getting this card to wheel. This card's not going to wheel. And if someone's been taking the Mirkwood Bats, I don't know why. But getting another Denethor is really nice. So I have 22 cards here that, I could, that I'm happy playing. Here I'm going to take Hobbit Sting or Banish from Edoras. I have a lot of kind of token maker things. I have 
let's just count my removal spells. I have one, two, three. I think that's a good amount of removal, honestly. But I'm happy to get more. And I think Hobbit Sting is better than the two Reaper here because I have one, two, three, four, five, five two drops already. This card's better than E Smart Cavalier, and I would play it. But I think getting one of these is good, and I think this card's more likely to wheel. Instant speed, pretty nice. Whoa, we got another Shadow Summoning. That's fantastic. Fantastic. This deck feels really fun already. This card doesn't do anything because lands don't do stuff to form in a 2 4. East Farthing Farmer isn't the best, but I have some food, I guess, because build a pony. So I can just buff something up. I don't really like Torment of Golem. Ooh, Nazgul. I think Nazgul is better than Mirkwood Bats because it's just better for my curve. I don't have a ton of three drops. I just love the Ring Tempts. Lambda spread. Lambda spread. Oh, Lembus. I thought it was Lambdas. I guess I've been exposed. I'll take the Wizard's Rockets. I don't need to splash here. I'm not going to play the Shire Terrace. I guess I'll take this in case I did want to splash. Sam's Rescue. Okay, I'll take the one Banish from Edoras now. I don't need another Sam's Desperate Rescue. I might not even play the both copies of the one I have. Eagles of the North, perfect. I love seeing this. I love having two land cyclers because then I can confidently cut a land, and I think that that's the correct way to do it a lot of the time. Also, Sauron plus Eagles of the North is a sick comp because you land cycle it to get in your graveyard. Ooh, and we got the two Creeper back, and because I already took Banish from Edoras, I don't need to take it now. So I can just get the two Creeper. Huge. Goodbye, Eastmark. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to cut the Sam's Desperate Rescues. The problem is a lot of the cards I'd want to get back or a lot of my creatures, quote-unquote, aren't really creatures at all. Because they're like tokens like this. Wow, late Ents Fury. I guess green is maybe not something people are into. That's something I've noticed. I have not seen a ton of green decks running around. Hobbit Sting is actually fantastic in my deck with these build the ponies I'm realizing. Okay. So here I'm definitely going to cut up planes right off the bat. Sam's Desperate Rescue is a card I do am interested in a little bit. I'm just going to put everything in and then cut stuff. Those are almost definitely getting cut, but I like to do this so that it's easier to see the cards that I'm looking at for people that aren't as familiar. So I'm going to play the Banish from Edoras. I know it's not the best card, but it's a reasonable one. Okay, 16 creatures plus the two Shadow Summonings. I'm going to cut... These are on the chopping block. This is on the chopping block. I think I'd rather play Esquire of the King than now for Wrath, now for Ruin. How many cards do I have that make multiple bodies? I have one multiple body maker, two multiple body makers, three, four, kind of five. I think Eagles of the North is just a better mass pump spell than this thing. Because this doesn't do anything if I'm behind. And I have plenty of mass pump. I got two of these guys and an Esquire. So I'm going to cut those. I think Sam's Desperate Rescue doesn't really work. If I want reanimation, I can use this guy. But I don't really have a huge reason to like want the reanimation stuff. How many Ring Tempts effects do I have, though? Because that's certainly relevant. I have one, two, three, four, five, five Ring Tempts effects. Interesting. Because getting up to seven is pretty good. I think I will cut Eastmark Cavalier as a weak card, East Farthing Farmer as a weak card, even though I do have the Build of Ponies for Synergy. And now I have to make two more cuts. I really want to be able to make Sauron the Ring Bearer. One, two, three, four, five, six is how many two drops in one. I really want to try it. And I don't really need Esquire of the King, I don't think. And then one Sam's Desperate Rescue. That seems fine to me. Because I, I really want as much Ring Temps as possible. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. That seems like enough to get to two relatively consistently, I guess. Um... I've just been happy playing one Shelob's Ambush, but maybe I'd rather just not. Maybe I'd just rather have another Sam's. Creature count 13. 
the second Sam's is just not going to be reliable enough, I don't think. It's good with Eagles of the North sometimes, too, if you need lands. So, yeah, this will be the deck, and I'll see you folks in the games. If you have been enjoying my videos and would like to support the channel directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patreon is a place where viewers can support the creators they enjoy, so if you've been finding my videos helpful or entertaining, or if you've maybe won a couple of extra booster packs because of some of my advice, Patreon is a way for you to chip in and help the channel succeed. You also gain access to some cool rewards as a patron, like my card-by-card -card tier list for Lord of the Rings with my thoughts on every card in the set, and also drafts with me and other cool rewards. I'd like to give a huge shout out to the patrons who support at the credits level, but without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to round number one. We have a good hand here on the draw. We can keep this Easterling Vanguard, Protectors of Gondor. If we just draw a Denethor, it would be perfect. We drew the Ambush, which does go well with the Sting. I think foods make Sting a lot better. And this is a deck where we will save the foods, because if we draw our Shire Sheriff, we'll be happy that we saved them. They missed a land drop. They hit this land drop, though. Nazgul. Sure. We're okay with this. We could have, like, Shelob's Ambush into Hobbit Sting, but there's no reason to two for one ourselves when we're about to just make enough guys that we can use our Hobbit Sting on it. I'm glad I only have one of the Sams. I can only imagine drawing it now. Having a couple land cyclers does make that card better because you'll always have something to do. But I'm still happy with the outcome here. Here I'm almost definitely going to play Nazgul and Hobbit Sting. Because then I can just use this on an untapped threat. Cycling shirt. <gasps> Twitch chat has pointed out something wonderful to me. You can... You can eat all the food. Thank you, Twitch chat. You have opened my eyes. Wow. They used Sam's Desperate Rescue combo like I was talking about. The smallest shall bear the ring. This is why Hobbit Sting is good, because in these super efficient spots, you just win the game here. Like, there's almost no card they could have to come back. They need to, like, multiple threats for one card. And I just kill it, and I have the ambush still. And I have, like, 10 power in play. Oh, I need to unlock a door. The door has been unlocked. Ah, Grimma will not be the answer to their problems. Labor win! Grimma has been banished from Edoras. Get lost, Grimma. Yes, and they concede. Victory. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We are going to keep this on the draw. We've got the two Creeper. We've got a kill spell. Bill the Pony is a great ring bearer. We kind of want this to die. Mushroom watchdogs. Perfect. 
Ooh, this guy makes some food that we can use with our Sharif. Sharif. Sharif of the Shire. Please trade. Please, sir. Okay. I'm going to claim the precious on Peregrine. I am terrified. They open up that back door, maybe. No reason to have that. Okay. Removal is really important in this set to break up their combos. Lambda's bread. Lock that and I'll go get that back door. I'll unlock it. <laughs> They're attacking me, no blocks. Oof. The Nazgul, sure. We shall play Bill, the pony. We can. We will. We'll just threaten the double block on the Watchdogs. Not that they're going to attack into this. I guess we could have attacked. Are they splashing or playing it in a two-color deck? Also, I hate that these lands aren't immediately apparent what they are. You have to kind of zoom in on them. Okay, they are splashing. Hopefully they don't see me. Thank you so much, Timber Baron, for the subscription. I appreciate that. Okay, we do want that eventually. We will Sharif, get rid of Old Man Willow. We want to get Sauron down. Missing an attack with the two Creeper was not great. Total Baggins. I think I should have played the not school. Cause Nazgul does the same thing, but it's a death toucher to block better. And then when I play this thing, it gets even bigger. So yeah, I messed that up. I just played the card that I drew for the turn, but yeah, if I have to trade for a mushroom watchdogs, that's fine though. I just kind of like all my spells right now. I could have gotten rid of the ambush, maybe. But I like having that up. It makes me feel safe, because a lot of the way they'd get rid of my guys is with a fight spell or with a hobbit's thingy. And this plus two really helps with that.
I could have got rid of Sam's Desperate Rescue. I kind of want my creatures to die. Sauron's not as good when my graveyard's empty. They might have instant speed removal. But that plays into my hands, almost. Instant speed, kill my Shire Sharif. Yep, they do have the Hobbit Sting. So, I completely punted this game, I guess is what I'm saying. Oath of the Great Host was a very bad play. Because now I even gave them the food. Like, what a disaster. I guess that was my fault, because I knew they had Hobbit Sting, and I should have played around it forever. Bad. Oh, no. This was a horrible turn of events. I choked this game super badly. Put the counter on Frodo. I'm forced to block it. Once again punished, because if I played the Nine School, it could actually block. It wouldn't just die. Oh, this was terrible. Wow, if I'd played literally any card except Oath of the Grey Host, I would have been in fine shape. But because I got greedy and I've just been... Yeah. Eventually, they were going to be able to kill my guy past... Uh, she loves the ambush anyway. Look at a treasure, which is helpful. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to take 11. The ring tempts me. Think, Nikolai. Do I want to play Nazgul first? Or do I have the mana for that? I don't think I do. So they can block, which is the problem. I'm going to get three 1-1s one next turn, which could help with something. Hmm. Shire Sheriff is doing good work. If they can't kill it again. They have clearly got something to play. Okay, quick beam. Okay.
Oh, quick beam's insane. Gosh, if only they hadn't had quick beam, this game would be a little bit easier. I'm gonna kill their 8 8 for sure. I'm gonna block like this to absorb as much damage as possible. I guess to take more damage this way. Yeah. I guess I got too greedy with my looting and stuff. I never got to play the Sauron after all. Yep, I just hunted this game away. Playing with the Grey Host lost me the game. Not a good sign for the card that I already didn't like. My gosh. Like, I was winning the game, and then I played that card and I lost. Very badly. Because I took a turn off and I could never catch up. Jeez. To be fair, it was, uh, bad. I should have played something else that turn and held up my spell because I knew they had the hobbits thing. And that lost me the game, but oh well. Welcome to another round. I made a lot of misplays that last game. Not playing the Nazgul that one turn was a really big mistake too that also cost me in a major way. Because then I couldn't trade with their stuff using Death Touch. Which if I could have just traded with their dogs using Death Touch, I would have been able to come back a little bit easier there. So also getting rid of the extra land was bad. If I had just played the Nazgul, I would have been... Looted away the 3-2 then. And if I looted away the 3-2, I'm just realizing now that the way the synergy would have worked is I could have um, brought back um, the Nazgul that I looted, the 3-2 that I looted away with my Sauron and made Sauron the Ring Bearer using that card. Which I'm only now realizing would have been very good. They can counter this if they want. No way am I attacking here, though. They could have the 3-2 Scry guy. Okay, they do not have it. Or they would have definitely played it, I think. Gosh darn it. Okay, -doke. we will cycle this. But yeah, I'm just going to move on, though. That last game, I'm, I'm pretty tilted that I lost. I should have won easily, and I screwed it up. So, yeah. They didn't counter the Nazgul, so maybe they just have nothing. It lay not.
pretty happy with how that ended up going. Gosh, realizing that Sauron synergizes with dead Ringbearer cards is super good. That's a realization I don't know if I would have made if I hadn't lost that last game. I want to hit my lands. So I'm going to play this guy. Also grows my Nazgul so I can still attack them. Ditch that card by a mile. They kept a card on top. So they have something that could be useful. Quick Beam, okay. Quick Beam is nutty. Definitely playing Sauron. Because then I attack with Menace, get an Eagles, and they die. And I knew they drew Gandalf. But even though Gandalf can block this, it won't matter. And then I play Denethor Sacrifice. Eagles. Like a 1 1. Drain them. Actually, I get back Nazgul, maybe. No, Eagles is way better. Because that just wins through the game off spot. Okay, we bounced back from our horrible game, and we're back in the good graces. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We have to mulligan, because we don't have a swamp. Never lucky. This hand's much better. Keep this. Ditch Sam's Desperate Rescue, because we can't use it. We'll see if we can get this Oath of the Grey Host to do anything this time. Shire Sharif could do some stuff here, maybe. Hobbit Sting certainly looking good. There, piece of your own medicine, buddy. They got a little bit of value. And then they get to counter my guy. Of course they do. <sighs> Oath of the Grey Host is looking so bad here again. I have to just trade off. Look how embarrassing Oath of the Grey Host is. Any 4-drop could, like, block for me here. 
But Oath of the Greyhost just does stone cold nothing except give my opponent a food. Oh my gosh, this is just a travesty. I can't believe this card is in my deck. Like, literally anything would be better than this card. Oh, gosh. I third-picked this so I could get some reps with it. I've looted it away. And cried myself to sleep twice playing it. Like, the tokens come in tapped. I'm still toast. Like, that's not even that powerful. My opponent played Rally at the Hornburg and did a very similar thing to this. And I'm dead. Wow. I am... I'm not going to take it out of my deck because I'm going to give it just the whole league to just ruin me, but my god, that card is awful. Awful. Holy heck. Welcome to another round. We can keep this with the Eagles of the North. We need to find a swamp, but we'll find one eventually. On the draw. We have Build a Pony, which will buy us a lot of time. We have a Lost Legend. Oh, no. Like, if Oath had been an East Farthing Farmer both times, we would have won those games, I think. I kid you not. Oh, we're going to lose this game. This deck is so good, and we're going to go two and three. This was just a bad hand. This has nothing to do with Oath. Really hoping for a swamp here. Or a creature I can play. Double black spell. Perfect. Bingo. The tilt is real. Not really. I'm not that tilted. They have a counter spell 100%. They have to. I can't cast a single spell in my hand. It's beautiful. It's the perfect synergy piece. Their mana screwed, but they have both their colors. I am keeping one landers on the draw. My lane cyclers and uh... there goes my swamp. I know I could have lost Legend there or Flamesmith. Oh well. We lost. Well, conclusion, um, I mean, it's still small sample size, obviously. And I know some people like Oath, but I tr really tried to get, I really wanted to give it a try and see if it was any good. And we just got completely owned when literally any card, like a two mana two, two would have been better than the Oath in like both games that we played it. Like a four mana one, one would have been better in those games. Just felt super useless. Like, this card would have been better, this card would have been better, this card would have been better, this card probably would have been better, this card would have been better, just like, everything would have been better than uh, the Oath of the Grey Host. Just awful card. But I think the first game I lost, I could have... The, 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 the two last losses I had, I had no control over, really. I just didn't have any cards to work with. The first game I lost, if I'd held up Shelob's Ambush for their Hobbit Sting on my Shire Sharif, like, they had all their mana tapped and all their cards, I could have almost certainly put them on having a card like that. I should have either kept the extra planes, discarded like Sam's Desperate Rescue, played the planes, and uh, yeah, because I think I messed up how the Sauron thing should have worked. But if I just held up Sam's Desperate Rescue, I still couldn't have played Oath of the Grey Host, I don't think. 
Maybe I could have, but I would have been giving them an extra food to use with their Hobbit Sting. Regardless, this deck was really, really good, and I think I could have definitely done way better if I had played better in that one game and then just like, I don't know. Yeah, but if I just, and even in that one game, if I just played the Nazgul first instead of the Urukai Berserk, I might have won. That was a tough one. I'm, I'm pretty disappointed with how this one went. But yeah, um, if you didn't make it all the way to the end of this video, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Um, leave hashtag uh, gold, black, white. Oh, no, that's not a good hashtag at all. Um, we had so many cool cards. This deck, I was so excited um, to, to play this deck and have it do well. But it just was not meant to be, I guess. Um, but yeah, hit the like button, subscribe for more. And if you didn't make it all the way till the end of the video, leave hashtag uh, wreck toast because uh, that was uh, not a good performance from the host. That's going to do it for this one, though. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.